Today on The Time Show, Vivek and Thomas Jefferson quote goes viral. Zelensky goes viral for appearing to be inebriated on drugs during an interview. Bud Light, Zach Bryan, Shane Gill's tweet, well, it flops again. Elon a meta enabling child exploitation, but Disney's still paying for ads on the platform. HBO beats out Disney Plus by showing actual profit. BYD to launch a performance luxury EV to compete with Ferrari. And AT&T to give each client about $5 in credit due to the outage. All that much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month, so if you click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have HBO Max beats both Paramount as well as Disney to get the first streaming profit, a very rare thing in the streaming community. Disney's only been losing billions upon billions of dollars on their Disney Plus online streaming fiasco, which will allegedly make a fiscal profit this year. Maybe. Perhaps. They, they just keep alienating about half their client base and prospective clients. Who would have thought that wouldn't be a good idea? Well, granted, anyone with a modicum of intelligence, granted that would not describe most people working at Disney these days. However, going back to good old Max, which is a terrible name for a streaming platform, that's most appropriately perhaps named for a dog. But, yeah, that's... They, they thought internally, we're going to take the great brand that we built up for decades, HBO, then we're going to call it HBO Go or HBO Plus, and then we're going to call it HBO Max, and at the end of the day, for the streaming, they decided to call it Max, which... I don't know who works in their marketing department, but I guess their product is perhaps so overwhelmingly beneficial and good that it doesn't matter what it's called. Or perhaps I'm just old school and I always just think of HBO, which revolutionized the consuming of media by being one of the first subscription platforms, which is how they got around things like the FTC, or more accurately, the FCC, so they could have more spicy entertainment by sending you a little magical, well, magical, dumb it down, magical box in the mail to connect your TV to, so it wasn't on the public broadcasting. But nevertheless, going back to the modern era, this comes to us saying to your weekly chin uh, on LinkedIn News. They note that Warner Brothers Discovery has some Hollywood bragging rights, quote, beating out rivals, studios, both Disney and Paramount to become the first with a profitable streaming platform. This according to a Hollywood reporter. It brought in $103 million last year from the Max app. Which again, seems like the worst name, well, not the worst, but one of the most silly names you can have for an app. But nevertheless, a lot of people apparently downloaded it and generated $103 million, which they better be talking about profit because overall revenue, that's nothing for streaming platforms, relatively speaking. They also noted that, but this part of his fourth quarter earnings reports was overshadowed by, quote, weakness in key areas. Warner Bros. Disney, also known as boringly as WBD, reported slumpish, slumping advertising sales and revenue in the fourth quarter was down around 7% due mainly to production delays from Hollywood labor strikes, which, spoiler alert, AI will fix that pretty darn quick and pretty darn soon considering most of Hollywood is just a copy-paste anyway. I don't know who writes the Fast and Furious scripts, but it might as well just be my nephew or niece because all they do is copy-paste and perhaps insert more absurd concepts and ridiculousness and have one or two cliche lines, and of course you have to pay Vin Diesel to say the word family multiple times. While interestingly enough, not being sponsored by Olive Garden, a missed opportunity of, and it's unfathomable almost with all the product plugins they have with that series, but nevertheless. Now, they noted that WBD also revealed it ended 2023 with 97.7 million st streaming subscribers, up from 95.1 million in the third quarter. Which, eh, that's not too shabby. Now, Perhaps the silver lighting for this situation in terms of, yeah, they're making a little bit of profit. They know that a lot of big news, they suspect they're going to have more increase in subscribers because they are going to have a Harry Potter series coming in 2026, which I was going to say, a wise man once said, time moves pretty quickly. If you don't take time to enjoy it every once in a while, yada, 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 I forget the rest. But nevertheless, that will be here before we know it. And that is perhaps one of the most important intellectual property relationships they have with J.K. Rowling. And that'll get a lot of people to tune in. I can't help but think a lot of people are going to subscribe just for that one show. 
as every streaming platform struggles to have some intellectual property that they maintain or they create. Because again, a lot of these things that people know, they're licensing deals and that's just a short term fix. It's one of those instances where I think Netflix paid $100 million to have the streaming rights for the old show called Friends. And that increased their subscriber count because people would you know, buy Netflix to tune into that one specific show. But that's a short term license agreement. Netflix doesn't own that in perpetuity. That's owned by, I forget who actually was the original creators of the show that licensed it out. But again, that's not going to be with Netflix forever. So a big way to actually get streamers and get people to buy into your streaming platform is to have more and more intellectual property that either create in-house or just buy outright. So it'll be interesting to see if Disney Plus maybe catches up and maybe shows a profit this year or maybe Paramount Plus, which Paramount, what are they doing these days? Sure. Well, granted, probably I'm definitely not the right audience since I well, I do technically have a TV, but it's just above the treadmill. It's not like not, I really don't tune into it during the week or actually usually for the weekend long runs. But nevertheless, yeah, it'll be interesting. To see. Let me know in the comments. Are you already subscribing to Max? And if not, is that something that you're going to maybe be interested in this year? I can't but think I know a friend or two who has a Hulu account because they have a couple of things apparently, but and Netflix, of course, seemingly everyone has. I like to say I'm part of the 1% of Americans that don't have Netflix. But, man, anecdotally speaking, I don't know a lot of people bragging about, you know, tuning into the Max, which, interestingly, you sound. But, leave in the comments. As always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in today. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So, if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback on how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.